Hey guys, Brett Kelly here, R&D engineer here at 45 Drives. And today I'm talking to our senior marketer, Chris McGean, about his experience using the Storinator storage workstation. Now Chris does all our videos for our website and our YouTube channel, so he knows all too well the pains of waiting for his video footage to import. So what Chris is gonna do is he's gonna show you a side-by-side -side speed comparison of his current uh, editing setup and he's going to compare that to the storage workstation and he's going to explain how it allows for him to have a smoother editing experience. So enjoy the video uh, and at the end if you have any questions, comments at all, as always drop in the comments box below or email us at info 45 drives we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Hey guys, Brett Kelly here, R&D engineer at 45 drives and today we're here talking to Chris McGean, a senior marketer here at the team with us and uh, hey Chris why don't you tell them a little bit about what you do. Sure, yeah, so as Brett said, senior marketer for 45 Drives. Uh, part of what I do with 45 Drives is the uh, video production. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the videos that you see on the YouTube channel that we have and the website, I'm um, kind of held responsible to make sure that those videos are produced, uh, shot, and held out the door and, and promoted online. Nice. Yeah. So uh, what software do you use to do it? Yeah, so just a little background on how the whole process works. Usually what ends up happening is uh, we'll meet together as a team with the R&D guys, the marketing team, we'll figure out what kind of content has to grow for that month. Uh, we set a date, we start shooting it. So I take all the content and then go back to my desk and just basically start uploading it, start editing it, start creating all the graphics, working with the audio files, and then uh, render something that's gonna be ready to go out the door. So in that entire process, I kind of use three main pieces of software. Uh, the main one is uh, everyone knows Adobe Premiere. I use the latest Adobe Premiere on Creative Cloud. Uh, you know that's kind of where I start uploading. You know most of the uh, multimedia files that we're working with. Uh, that's where I start putting a story together on the timeline. And then once the story kind of comes together, uh, I start getting into uh, you know creating titles, creating graphics. You know the lower thirds that you see. You know with the name, title, and everything when someone's introducing magic. a video. Yeah, the magic that happens. Uh, I use a, a program called Adobe After Effects, oh, yeah. so another Adobe program. It just kind of ups the level of production when you have nice three elements inside your inside nice. your video. And then uh, for any, uh, well, a lot of the stuff that we use, we want to show uh, captures of things happening on a computer. So we use a screen capture software, most of the time called Camtasia. So that's that's kind of the the three main software items that I use in order nice. to get a project from the start to the finish. Yeah, so I imagine you, we're not using external hard drives here. You've got centralized NAS. Yeah, so uh, a little bit about kind of the, the setup that I work with uh, on a daily basis. Uh, currently, uh, back, at, back at the desk, I use a combination of uh, an editing PC and a Storinator AV15 server. So that's kind of co uh, connected by a window share. And what I basically do is sit down and just upload directly uh, onto the Storinator folder that's shared onto my Windows computer. But You've got two computers then. Like you've got your workstation and then you've got a uh, NAS server pretty much on your desk, yep. right? Yeah, so that's the thing. That's so, yeah. you know, I do have an editing PC, you know, a beefy editing PC. It's probably over 10 grand worth of the parts that are inside of it to make sure that the workflow is as smooth as possible. And of course, on the other side of it is a Storinator storage server. So uh, I never have to worry about you know, storage, like, you know, storing files again. I know I have the space there. I know it's centralized in one folder that I set up. So you've got your, your, your workstation, your Storinator. So um, you got to see a sneak peek of this already, but a little introduction to the folks at home. Um, what we've got running here is our new product, our Storinator workstation, which is pretty much <laughs> what he just described into two things. We have a, a Linux storage server underneath um, serving the files out, and then we have this nice Windows background you're looking at here is a is also running on this same hardware here so essentially what we did is we've taken the two and we've put it into one so Chris you got to play with it a bunch during our uh, our R&D phase while we were just to make sure that it felt right and all that um, you were pretty excited about it and we're really excited to replace your current workflow with it so uh, why don't you give us a little bit of uh, insight how you think this will make things nice for you yeah yeah of course so like you said I, I did get a chance to use it uh, in, in the test phase before you know we're, we're going to launch it into the public, and uh, I will say initially, I, when I when I first started having a conversation about it, I'm like, oh well, one is basically going to reduce my desk space mm. from this to this, right? And it's 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 something that you you wouldn't think would be a big deal, 
but like it, it actually will be a big deal and you have more desk space to work. The more cluttered, the more stressed you're gonna be when you're in a project. Anyway, that was before I actually got a chance to actually physically get my hands on it and start doing imports and transfers. And so, yeah, during, during the test, um, I took one of my, my project files. You know, typical uh, full project, had audio, had video, had graphics, had everything that is usually in a, in a project file. And uh, I started doing a uh, transfer with it and started importing all these files into Adobe uh, Premiere to start, as if I'm going to start editing a project. And, you know, the current uh, setup that I have now uh, with the combination between having an editing, an editing PC and a store editor. Yeah, and it's I, connected 10, 10 gigabits. So exactly. That's, yeah, fast, that's a good but. point. It's connected by 10 gigabits. So now when I usually do these transfers, you know, I, I, I start the transfer. Start to look on my phone, you know, get up, get a coffee, get a whatever. Class. Sometimes, you know, even 500 gigabyte file, I'll go, I'll go to the local coffee shop and, and get something to come back. And yeah, it's, that old classic. Oh, yeah, it's loading, boss. It's loading. Yeah. Exactly. You know what? You know, where's Chris at? Oh, it's rendering. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's gone to get a coffee. Yeah. And uh, so, and so, I had that feeling going into this, like, okay, well, how much different is this going to feel? And uh, literally, I, I uh, took the took the files and imported it in. I'm like, okay, here we go. And then. I, I caught myself kind of watching the transfer. I, I started to watch the transfer, and uh, I was with another R&D team member, and he was like, you know, does this, does this look any different? Does this feel any different? And he noticed that I just had, like, a smile hmm. on my face, right? Yeah. And yeah, the thing totally was, it was that. just, like, I had to watch it because I, I couldn't, I didn't understand fully how quicker it was going to be. Anyway, so I, I caught myself watching it, and uh, it, was, uh, it, it was pretty impressive, and it was, it was just so smooth in the fact that once it was done, I didn't have to like sit and like okay well let's let's let the program conform all the files and you know let let the audio files conform. Yeah. So I started before it was even done conforming, started feeding through and, and, and make sure all the files were, were perfect looking before I started editing it. And and I could just I didn't have to get up out of my seat, I didn't have to go get a coffee, I didn't I didn't have to do anything. I just started working on it right away. Which was just kinda weird because <laughs> like I, I I've been doing it for four years and I, yeah. I've never had the opportunity to actually do that. So that that's kinda my experience with it. Nice. I, I, it's not in a, in a production environment, but when I started working on a project with it, uh, I just had a smile on my face just because it was it was so cool to feel how smooth it was. It was just every transition from importing to opening up the files to scrolling through them to make sure everything is there was just all in one fluid motion, which was which is cool. Cool, and then yeah, just a little background of why it can be so much faster than that too is like. Um, in contrast, because he said he's got a workstation, you've got your workstation, you've got your server, and it's 10 gigabit. Like, that's fast, fast, fast. The thing is, with, with the workstation that you were using, is you had your, your storage underneath, but you were using the Windows that was virtualized. It, it's a VM in here. What you're looking at is a virtual machine. And uh, we're using the graphics pass through, and that's how you get the good uh, the video work you need. But you notice that because it's not sitting on a single SSD anymore, it's, it's on a a rated array underneath mm -hmm. that like it's so much faster than yeah. you could ever imagine yeah so because what a lot of people what you hear sometimes is people go oh virtual like it's virtualized now that can't be as fast as the bare metal mm -hmm. and then what you were finding is it's yeah. actually to your user feel yeah. it's a bit snappier yeah and yeah it's, isn't it's, that fun <laughs> it, it's, it's crazy because you start to think like oh well what are the specs how different are the specs from one to the other yeah it's not it is about the specs but it's actually not in, yeah. in the way, like, you need to feel. Yeah, like feel. benchmarks like, aren't a lot, right? It's yeah. how it feels. There's numbers, and numbers don't lie. That's yeah. the thing. Numbers don't lie. But the thing is, it's like a car. Once you get in it and start using it and, and start, like, experiencing what it feels like, it's like it's, it's the feeling is, is what the difference is, basically. Gotcha. And, and the smoothness of it. And it's, just, it's, it's when it comes to video production, the little things actually do matter because it's the, it's the little problems that end up adding up and, and, and you know, in the end giving you problems, you know, finishing a project. So cutting out all the little problems that usually happen in the day-to-day -day basis of creating a project is like, in the long run, a huge thing. Cool. Yeah. So you obviously are pretty excited to get this thing into your hands and use it. Do you see uh, this kind of changing the lives, making things easier for other people like you or even other industries? Yeah, and you know, the first thing I thought about was, obviously I relate myself to either the small video production businesses or even uh, you know the inspiring video producers that want to get started. Oh uh, yeah, the, the YouTube. Yeah, the YouTube the creators. YouTube creators like, there's that's, millions of them, and it's, it's the future of television. It really. is. It is. And you know what? These guys, and I'm not holding anything against the Hollywood filmmakers, oh, but like no. these guys, because of what they have to work with, are like the next generation creators. You know, when you get started, there's so many questions you need to ask yourself. Yeah, like right away, like 
some people build their workstation really well, spend all their money on that and not think about their storage. Or maybe the other way, they go like, oh, I'm going to need to store all this stuff. I got yep. this nice, huge camera. Exactly. And then there's the two budgets to balance. Yep. And this helps solve that pain Yeah, too. yeah, exactly. And that's what I was going to say. Like, you spend so much time doing your research, like... So back, actually, when we first started doing videos for 45 drives, we used a Sony Handycam that actually had to be plugged in. Oh, yeah. And, and, so, and the Snowball. And a Snowball microphone that was USB'd in. So, like, it was, it was pretty rough. And, uh, you know, editing off of Windows Movie Maker and literally using a hard drive to store everything. Uh, it's come a long way. But to get back to, to what you were saying is, you know, when, you were starting, when you're starting out as a video producer and you're just really excited to start making videos, you do a lot of research on like, okay, well, what processor do I need? What mm. graphics card? How many graphics cards do I need? And you spend like literally months because it's, it's a big part of your budget. So you start actually researching on building an editing bay that you know is, that you know is gonna run your, uh, run your production fairly smooth. And then you spend months and you spend a lot of money on it. And then you realize after using this editing bay for a couple of months that you're like, oh, now I have a hard drive, a uh, storage problem. And you have storage. You know, you exactly what you said. Start all over again. And you're like, yeah. well, I have another problem. Yeah. And so, the unique part of this is, and this is this is how I felt about the YouTube creators starting out and anyone small who wants to scale up, is it just takes all of that time and money researching on your video production setup, where you just buy, you know, basically one machine that does it all for you. Uh, you know, all the research yeah, you need. It takes the guesswork out of it. It takes like, the guesswork. Yeah we're all about basically putting something out there that fits the needs of anyone who needs to use it. But we're 45 drives too. We're, we like to accommodate the dreamers yeah. who always, no matter what, they, they got yeah. their, they've got their vision of it. Exactly. So, and the idea is too, is like where we've picked out the ideal payload that they need to get the job done. We've built in a little bit of customness where that if they want to use a different board or use a different CPU, oh, I want four graphics cards. No problem. Yeah. We got you covered. Yep. You, you've got the, the fluidity to kind of buy yep. your own stuff. There's a level of customization because, I mean, that world, they're so creative. They want to mm. be creative with the stuff they, exactly. they work with too, right? Exactly. And obviously technology changes every day. So uh, the ability to customize your one piece of hardware that's going to run everything for you is, I mean, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Man, thank you so much for your time, Chris, uh, sitting down with us and giving us the rundown of like what you, how everything works for you and how this is going to change your life. And Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Like, give me a rundown of this thing and even looking forward to like having it in a video production environment, using it daily. Uh, I'm pretty stoked to like incorporate this workstation in my, uh, in my everyday project. Yeah, we're really excited to, uh, I'm glad to hear that you're excited and really excited to get it out to the public. And yeah the youtube creators and the in everyone just to just to see what our uh, our intelligent customers can do yep. with this with this awesome box exactly yeah so uh that's it so as always you got any questions comments anything at all drop a comment in the uh, section below email us at info 45 drives we'd love to hear from you